Hello, welcome to Casual Veteran Gamer, and in the video today we will be looking at the dexterity based barb called Tavika. Being the daughter of a drow and a human was not the easiest of upbringings. Knowing that she would not be allowed to live in drow culture, she was brought up in an unremarkable town on the Sword Coast. However, being among humans was something she resented as she was constantly viewed with suspicion and even arrested a few times just for how she looked. She tried to get away from this life and gain some authority so she could be the law by joining the Flaming Fist. However, this quickly made things worse. Her fellow officers weren't any better than the ignorant commoners, and the same old prejudices were there. All of the scorn she had received had been building and bubbling away her whole life, to the point where she broke and went into a rage. This was a violent affair, and the blows of her peers seemed to have little effect on her, and after maiming several of her so-called colleagues, she went on the run into the wilds. It was while she was travelling in the vicinity of Boulder's Gate where she was picked up by the Nautiloid. So here she is, she is, is a drow half-elf barbarian, I've named her Tavika. background I've chosen for her is Soldier, to represent the time she spent in the Flaming Fist. To raise as half-elf for her ability improvements, I've chosen Dexterity and Constitution. She will also get Dancing Lights at level 1. The class is Barbarian, no choices to make there. For her skills, chosen Survival and Perception, to represent the time she has spent outside of Baldur's Gate, on her own, almost on the run, travelling through the wilds and nature. As for her ability points, being a Dexterity-based Barbarian, I've made her Dexterity 16, her Strength at 14 and Constitution at 14. I can't bring myself to make a Barbarian whose Strength is lower, well, lower than 14 really, but I guess maybe 12 would be the lowest I'd ever go. Although she won't be using strength for her attacks, I guess she could still use any melee weapon half decently, but having a strength of 14 helps her jump further and increases her carry weight. Her charisma is at 10, wisdom at 12, intelligence 10. Again, the wisdom is kind of linked to the survival and perception. She has her wits about her, good senses, good intuition. She doesn't have a low intelligence, it's very average for human or humanoid, I suppose, and charisma is very average as well. So let's get into it. At level 2, Tavika doesn't have any particular choices to make, but she gains danger sense and reckless attack. At level 3, Tavika gets to make her subclass choice. Having never gotten along with civilization in general, or more like they haven't gotten along with her, she is inspired by nature and the beasts she sees on her travels. She especially likes the eagles flying far above her enemies with the ability to come crashing down upon her foes. So she's going to take Eagle Heart. She also does get Fairy Fire, but this isn't going to be so useful because her charisma isn't great and she can't concentrate while raging. So far in her life, Tavika has been worried about defending herself, hence her choice of a shield. And she's outside the grove and here she can rage. Dive down upon her enemies, as nature intended. Tavika is fairly sure there are some nice gloves inside this chest, so she's just going to pass it along to Shadowheart. She's going to unlock the chest, or at least that's the hope. Shadowheart might need a bit more practice. And she's going to pick up Reason's Grasp. Anything that lets her wail on her enemies for longer is going to be coming in useful. In the middle of the Blighted Village, Tavika finds Haste Helm. At the start of combat, the wearer gains momentum for three turns. This means that whenever combat begins, she will be able to run down her enemies more easily, which she's all in favour for. At level four, Tavika has a slight change of heart, and she's grown to trust those around her, the small group of fellow adventurers she's been with. She's going to become part of a pack. She's going to become a wolf heart so that her team members can get advantage and so she can help her party hunt down her prey more easily. Also, at level 4, we get to choose a new feat, or choose a feat, and she's had enough of this shield nonsense. She doesn't need to be on the defensive. She wants to go all out and just get as many attacks as possible. So she's going to take dual wielder. So she gets plus one bonus to armor class anyway when she's dual wielding, and she can use two weapon fighting even when her weapons aren't light. Sounds ideal. While the party is still exploring the goblin village, or the blighted village, they come across this chest. And inside this chest, there is a handy little weapon, steel forged sword. Weapon enchantment is plus one short sword. It's okay, she's going to equip that in her main hand. In her offhand, we haven't got any good weapons to put there yet. Maybe she'll put on the speedy reply, although she always has momentum when she enters combat anyway. But having as much momentum as possible might come in useful. While looking around the goblin camp, Tavika finds that Roa Moonglow has a rapier plus one. So she's going to take that, since that is a finesse weapon and plus one. 
Now in this chest behind Draw Ragslin are the spring step boots. Now it's not like these boots are actually going to do a huge amount, but she can't help but put on equipment that gives her extra momentum. In the Underdark Fort, there is a sneaky chest hidden behind a hidden wall, which needs to be disarmed. There's a trap on it. So we'll do that first. Let's give ourselves advantage. And then we need to kick the lock. There we are. And inside is the Chain of Liberation. Once per turn, the wearer may reduce the duration of their momentum by one to sprint. Let's just put that on Tavika, shall we? And sprinting, rush ahead in a straight line, reduces the duration of your momentum by one turn. So at the beginning of every combat, Tavika can use this a couple of times if she really, really needs to, to shorten the distance between her and her enemies. If she feels like she's running out of momentum in any particular combat, she can put on speedy reply, where if she hits an enemy, she gains momentum for two turns. And in fact, now that she has the chain of liberation, she's going to try that. She's going to stick on speedy reply. A Minotaur is breaking in here. Something new in patch 7, actually. A lone Minotaur. Not so many hit points. Now, let's see. Tafika has momentum. And if we go in the common tab, she can move 20 feet in a straight line. And let's look at this momentum. It's at 3. It goes down to 2. But she can only do it once per turn, which is a bit sad. And now she is within range. Run up to this Minotaur without having had to use any sort of dash. Going in a, go into a rage this turn. Do the obvious reckless attack. Then Lazer will do her best to catch up because she's a bit slow. And she's got advantage because of Wolf's Heart Prey. I'm going to leave the Minotaur alive just to show off speedy reply. We've still got one use of momentum if needed. We can sprint 20 feet. Not bad. But we're going to use our offhand attack. Hopefully hit. And momentum goes up to three. We just gained two charges, which means we can carry on doing nice things like sprinting. And oh, I've got advantage on attack rolls. Could use incising how, but kind of pointless at this moment in time. Anyway, part of a pack. Everyone's missing. That's right, Sorcerer's got this covered. Oh, ah, five, five, five. Oh, I just want to point out, with Reason's Grasp, since Hotfix 20, when combat ends, we don't automatically get the extra temporary hit points. So you do have to... Make sure you end that yourself before the end of combat now. Something very important I think that needs to be said about Rage. Rage says deal two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons and while throwing objects. What isn't said, which is true in 5th edition and seemingly true in Baldur's Gate 3 at least, is that Rage only does two extra damage when you make a melee attack using strength. And while we are holding finesse weapons and dexterity is the highest stat, we're not actually making attacks using strength. So hopefully we'll get to see this. So let's go into Rage. And I want to point out that uh, we're actually too far away at the moment to reach the bullet right now. But we've got sprint. So we're going to take that 20 feet to be able to come up to here. And I'm going to have to use reckless attack. Good, I hit. So six piercing damage. Roll a two from 1d8 plus one because it's a plus one weapon and then plus three from the dexterity modifier there is no extra plus two and that's because we are using dexterity so i will say right now that this barbarian build dexterity based builds are never going to do quite as much damage as strength based builds for two reasons one because there's less damage on rage but also because the strongest finesse weapon we currently have is well they are rapiers with 1d8 damage whereas there are strength weapons such as Azel's great sword here which does 2d6 damage or we can have great axes at 1d12 for example so the damage is going to be a little bit less than a strength based barbarian however that's not the end of the world because the barbarian still has other perks so on turns that she doesn't use rage she will be attacking twice might be worth trying to use piercing strike first I do want to point out that it says play advantage on attack rolls and when we check, we do get advantage. And that is seemingly coming from Wolf Heart's Prey. There's no other reason that the Bullet would have advantage on it. And Tavika doesn't have anything that gives her advantage. She didn't use Reckless Attack. So it says the Barbarian's allies have advantage on melee attack rolls against this creature. Maybe the Barbarian counts as an ally to itself, I suppose. So it means we don't need to use Reckless Attack. So she won't be having advantage against her. So that's a hit and the offhand attack. And we can build up momentum so that every single turn, if needed, we can use Sprint. And I want to point out just now that Sprint did not provoke an opportunity attack, which is quite powerful. She needs to get away somewhere. 
So although Tavika has a Mind Flare tadpole in her head, she has found a group of people who she can trust and do not judge her. They're just here to work together towards a common goal. That is something she's been looking for her whole life. You know, there's pros and cons to having been picked up by the Mind Flare ship. Right, maybe we should do this. Oh, critical hit. She's loving it. She loves these dexterity-based weapons and all this movement speed if she needs it. And I didn't pick up Crush's Ring. She could have done that to improve her movement speed even further. <laughs> that would definitely have helped. Haven't cast Long Strider on her. Could improve her movement speed even more. But I don't think she needs it. With 40 feet of movement and an extra 20 feet in the first turn for free, it's unnecessary to have these things. So had I picked up Crush's Ring, it could have gone to maybe Lazel, who wants to run up to enemies and smash him in the face as well. And we've scared the bullet away. So let me know what you think of Tavika here who once again forgot to end her rage voluntarily. Oh no, there it is. The back, we get the temporary hit points. I can't quite make out when that is and isn't working now. What changes would you make? Because she's not optimal. Her equipment isn't optimal, but we've gone for a theme of kind of movement speed and dual wielding. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.